So it's last ride, six, just over six and a half thousand kilometres a month, just over 60,000 metres of elevation. Beautiful Norton Summit here, cruising around. How, how do I look? Do I look pretty tired? A little bit of fresh faced? <laughs> it's a crazy how many kilometres I've done this month. I'm 36 years of age. Never in my life would I thought I could ride this many kilometres in a month and still work a decent amount of hours. I wonder how many hours on the bike I could do actually did it full time know, for a month. That'd be interesting. Just get on the bike, pack everything up, just go ride, just go tour across Australia. 10,000 kilometres in a month? Who knows? Who knows? It's all talk and I should do it. So that's been a great little challenge, the uh, Strava Prove It Challenge. I didn't even think I was going to do it until about a week and a half in. I thought, fuck it, let's bang up the Ks. Let's go a bit nuts and uh, punch out some miles. Beautiful ride. I learned a lot just watching the sunset now. It's been a fantastic month. Do more videos about it. Ask your questions down below. Learn a lot about myself. Learn a lot about, learn a lot about other people. Learn a lot more about hydration and nutrition and how important they are. Learn a lot about mindset and mentality and goals and focus. Just a fucking great month. I love doing these months. It's going to be crazy, a bit schizophrenic, a bit bipolar, and then that carries on for the rest of the year in other areas in life. Just, just focusing and pushing it. It's really good fun. I recommend people doing it. Learn about yourself. This wind, this wind has been, <laughs> this wind has been my closest friend for the last, last uh, four, last 31 days. This has been following me around everywhere. Headwind, a little bit of tailwind. Mostly headwinds this month. It's been pretty amazing. A little gust of tailwind here and there, but it's been great. The wind is all in your head. All right, enough yapping. I'm going to go home, give Freely a central massage, have a big carb feed early night, drink up some more water, back on the bike tomorrow, punching out some more Ks. A bit less, so a bit less for February. Recover and uh, rest up strong. We'll see you soon. Back to more video uploads. Peace. Thanks for all the support, guys and girls. So you can see, a little bit leaner, a little bit leaner, but not a lot, hold on, let's get some light in here, shall we? Not a whole lot, because sport isn't enough to keep you lean. It's got your diet choices. Because if you look at the, the guy who, uh, Sitting in front of me, Matt, Matt Carnell, he's banging out similar mileage, very fit lad. Not as lean as me though, not as lean as me. So how can someone be doing as much training as Duran Rider, or a little bit more, but not be as lean as Duran Rider? Dietary choices, dietary choices, simple as that. Questions we got, I'll uh, post your questions down below, we'll do some follow up videos. Questions you got, what tires did you use? I used a uh, Maxxis Refuse. I used Specialized Armadillos. The, the Maxxis Refuse, that's the brand, Maxxis. The model number is Refuse. Great tire. I ran 28s in Mossavello with it. Really good tire. Cheap, but pretty fast. Very puncture resistant. Very comfortable. <laughs> what saddle did you use during it? I used a Specialized Fino. Actually, I'll go get one and show you what it looks like. Here it is. So my saddle up light has an anatomical cut in there, and it's very flat. It's a very flat saddle. There's not there's not much dip in there. You can sort of see it's very flat, and it, this saddle keeps its shape. It's an old saddle. Can't get them on a uh, brand new anymore. But I buy them on eBay. But my that my saddle might w works for me, but it might not work for you. Here's the Maxxis Refuse. This light's doing funny things. So Refuse Maxxis. Other questions, did you eat 100% raw food diet while you're doing this month? <laughs> no way. <laughs> I would like to. I would like to. That would be great if there's like a support car following me around. Just going, here, here doing right or so. Here's a tray of sliced organic mangoes. Here's banana smoothie. For sure, man. Because that shit tastes so fucking good. It's incredible. Or another option would be, I'm just riding through fruit orchards all the time. It's just fruit ripening and just dropping all around me. Like in nature. It's funny, every animal I saw at night, I saw foxes, daytime I saw koalas, kangaroos, lizards. They have as much food as they want all around them, all the time. 
us humans, no, no, no. We chop down all the fruit trees that were native. Uh, we turn it into grazing lands. If you want food, you got to go and buy it. Of all the kilometres I did, I foraged not much at all. Not much at all. And a lot of the stuff that I did forage, like wild plums and that, was inedible. So that would be my preferred thing. What did I actually eat? Same diet as always. Lots and lots of sugary vegan foods. And I kept it pretty low fat. I kept it, hmm, I'd say under 50 grams of fat per day. My normal intake of fat would be under 30 grams per day or less. When I was doing this touring, a little bit extra, 50 grams of fat per day. There was one time where I did have, at night time, a bag of vegan potato crisps. And I'll tell you what, I felt pretty... The oil in them. I hadn't had that much oil for like fucking years. Literally years. The oil in the chips, for about an hour afterwards, I'm just like... My legs felt heavy, felt sticky. It's almost like red blood cells. You could feel them sticking together, just slowing it for night. I had to have it lay down. It was amazing. I was just really dumb. So I had to lay down. I had to ride it for an hour. And then I felt all right. But it's just amazing that people will eat this greasy stuff, even if it is vegan. But man, oil. Do the best to get oil out of your diet or to minimize it. Minimize it as much as possible. It definitely isn't a health food. It's definitely not performance food. Um, another question is how much sleep did you get? Not enough because I was still trying to do work as well and training. So sleep got the, uh, got the ass. Um, Another question here. How did you not get muscle soreness? Well, I'm very conditioned. I have years of conditioning on the bicycle. And I know how to listen to my body. Like yesterday, I did 460 kilometers. Today, I didn't do anything. Took a recovery day off. Because I can just feel my knees just a little bit. And it's still start of the year. So I don't, I don't want to give myself issues. So I listen to my body. All right? Often might go out for a ride and see how I feel, but today I was like, no, nah, you've done enough. Just have a listen, have a recovery. Let your body absorb the training. So that the secret to muscle soreness is you have to listen to your body. I don't train with painkillers. I don't train with painkillers. That's a very common thing is people guzzle painkillers because then you can go and train hard, you don't feel the pain. You know, you can fly up those hills with painkillers, but it's very dangerous because you might get a little niggle, but you don't feel it until that fucker's, that tendon is just ripped off the bone or whatever. Or well, it's become full blown tendon. Also, don't train with painkillers. The only time you should take painkillers is if you've got some real excruciating pain, but don't, you shouldn't be training anyway. You shouldn't be training anyway. So that's how I avoid muscle soreness is conditioning. Bicycle setup, I have my little white out pen, mark my setup, so not, if anything slips, I can get onto it. So I am like, this, just, Outraged, frustrated, and surprised how many people will literally spend $10,000 or more on a bicycle. And I'm like, how, how do you know what your setup is? Oh, I just, just, just sort of feel it. So just feel it. I don't know, man. I've ridden over 200, 250,000 Ks as a vegan. I can't just feel my setup. I can't just feel it. <laughs> it's crazy. But the thing is, people will have this. I don't know, they don't want to put a liquid paper pen on their bike because it devalues the bike or something. But their setup slips down. I don't know. I don't know what people are thinking, but that's what I do is I have a liquid paper mark set up on my shoes, my handlebars, and my saddle level. Everything, anything that's going to slip down or sideways or up or whatever, I have a liquid paper pen mark as a reference point. Another question. Did you feel like getting bored at some point um yes it's just about shifting the focus it's just about shifting the focus what's that one it's just about shifting the focus simple as that if you you know I did that video the other day about where to get my motivation you know simple as that just gotta shift your focus it's just it's it's what life's about man it's what life's about plain and simple so there's a couple of questions I answered to keep the video short we'll do some more Post questions down below, and maybe when I'm a bit more awake, <laughs> I'll uh, we'll bang out another video. Def no, we'll definitely do videos, man. Back in action now. Back in action. Thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. Good little fun month. Bit of trash talk, and as always, credit a bit of drama on Strava. It's all good. It's all good. Now, let's get some excited when it's really fucking hot. A little roll of tape.
a little roll of tape. I'm gonna grab this little bad boy, chuck it in this massive oversized saddlebag here. Look at that. Some tape, mate. So I use the box, my bike's up, go to the airport. Say five bucks right there. 